What is going on guys? Coach Joe here at the Lions Den located in Colmar, PA. And in this video, I just want to give you guys an update of where things are at and also talk about some beginner to intermediate mistakes that I've made along my journey. And as you progress, if you guys listen to these tips, I think it'll really help you progress in your lifting journey. So let's get right to it. So first and foremost, guys, I want to get on here and just give you an update of where things are at. If you guys follow me on my Instagram, which hopefully you do, it's just Zat Strength on Instagram. I put a post talking about my struggles with mental health. Being a content creator, owning a business, and everything else in your life uh, can have just extreme highs and extreme lows. Uh, so for me, it's been a journey and a process of becoming my best self possible. Uh, so that's kind of me being transparent on the lack of content consistency as I've been kind of going through a tough time in my life. So I just want to reach out to anybody who had sent me a message or hit me up. I just really appreciate your support during these times. And it's given me a new sense of purpose on bringing mental health to light, talking about it, making it more normalized to talk about it, especially in the strength community, and also using my resources and the people that I know to be able to uh, give to them to people who struggle with mental health to the best of my ability. You know, it does help me when I help others, uh, but I know that there are a ton of people that are suffering in silence, so I wanna make it more of my mission uh, and kind of sprinkle it throughout content uh, to be able to help you guys uh, because I can't be the only one, right? And I always appreciate uh, when people are vulnerable and transparent with me, so I want to be vulnerable and transparent with you guys. Okay, we're in this together, uh, and, and we can get through this together. And I want to be a, a part or, or a light uh, that can help bring awareness to that topic specifically. Now, with that being said, I know that I struggle with consistent uploads, and I really want to make it my mission to be able to put out content consistently uh, because, let's be honest, I think it helps a lot of people out there, right? Whether it's in their strength training journey, whether uh, that's with their life, etc. cetera. Uh, and it makes me feel a lot better when I go through these tough times knowing that I'm helping other people through the content that I've been putting out. So this is me getting back to putting content. So an update is you know i still have this plan of doing a bodybuilding show um talking to my coach who's dave smith he was in some of my jujitsu videos he's been in some of my instagram posts in the past uh we were shooting for earliest would be kind of the end of spring and then latest would be next fall or the fall of 2023 so it gives me a lot of time to get back to training consistently uh putting on the size that i need to be able to have a, a good package on stage uh and really get after it so right now i'm in a massing phase okay so uh, i'm about 275 and i'm trying to get to around 285 by the end of this massing phase uh, my goal is to really try to work on my upper body if you guys have watched my videos you know that my legs uh, are pretty solid uh, but i really need to look proportional in the sense of having an upper body that matches my lower body so really hammering the back and the chest i'm um, trying to pull out you know biceps stuff like that uh, is kind of what we're doing putting emphasis on in this off season or this massing phase. So uh, I'll be talking about that more in future videos, you know, massing, being a calorie surplus, how I'm going about it, etc. cetera. Uh, so that'll be for future uh, videos to come. Now what I wanna get into is kind of jump right into some tips uh, and, and kind of just help you guys on uh, things that I, I wish I knew uh, then that I didn't know uh, that really would help me progress in my journey. So let's start off with tip number one. So tip number one, and this is something that I was guilty of for a long time, and that was not resting enough between sets, okay? And it was something that I was thinking about as I was training actually the other day, was a lot of us, right, we wanna rush through our work or we, we only have a certain amount of time, uh, so we try to get through it as fast as possible. And if that's the case, I understand. I'm just happy that you're training and putting some time to, to dedicate towards training. But for those of you that are really trying to push it, whether that's with your physique or whether that's with your strength, uh, rest is super crucial between your sets. And I'll actually link a video up here where I talk more in depth about it throughout a training session uh, that gives you guys some staple points and things to think about for how long your rest should be uh, and, and what kind of dictates when you're ready to go. Uh, but if you guys are serious about, like I said, putting on strength and size, you need to make sure you're giving yourself enough time between sets uh, so that you can put in enough effort uh, for your working sets. Okay, so just kind of keep yourself aware of that. Um, and I'm gonna say that, that rest range is gonna be anywhere from three to five minutes. So even for hypertrophy, a lot of people used to think, oh, we have that, that kind of that 90 second rest period for hypertrophy. Uh, but for me, you know, as I progress and I've talked to some of the top coaches and, 
and researchers in the field, uh, a lot of gains are going to be made if you can give yourself three to five minutes rest so that you can push harder and get the proper stimulus that you need for your body to grow. All right, so that's going to be tip number one, or, or rather mistake number one. Uh, if you're doing it, you should probably look into it. Disclaimer, I do want to hit on the point that this is going to be more of an intermediate tip, okay? So somebody who's just starting, I wouldn't be so overly concerned with my rest periods, but as you are progressing in your journey of strength training or, or physique or fitness, whatever, rest periods do become crucial. So uh, just kind of watch that video that I referenced, give you guys more uh, input and information on that, and then it's gonna set you up for a lot more success. Okay, now mistake or tip number two is something that I was also really guilty of. I'm actually guilty of all these mistakes, uh, but this one was a big one, and that was taking too many warm-up sets. All right, now this is gonna pertain to more strength sport athletes, uh, but also with bodybuilding or hypertrophy. And for example, what I used to do, say with a bench press, right? I would do the empty barbell for 15, 20 reps, then I put on 135, then I go 155, then I go 185, then I go 205, then 225. And I was doing those, those warm up sets for a lot of reps. So say if my target rep range was gonna be eight reps, I was kind of doing all those warm ups in that eight rep range, uh, working all the way up to my working weights. Now, as I got older and as my training journey continued, I realized that as long as I'm warm, okay, and maybe that's, you know, do the empty barbell, do 135, uh, I can cut out some of that volume for the warm ups and I can use that energy to better progress in my actual working sets. So something may look like today is I go 135. If 135 feels good, maybe I'll jump right to 225 or 205 um, rather than having all those in-between jumps. The other thing that I started doing was maybe those beginning sets, there's a good amount of volume. So I'm in that 15 rep range. And then as I'm warming up, I cut those reps. So say maybe it's like 135 for a set of 12 to 15 reps. Then I go to 205. Maybe I just do six to eight reps. And then maybe I go 255 and I do you know three or four reps. And that way I can save the energy and I can take those bigger jumps faster so I can get right to my working sets and really push the weight, uh, which is what's gonna help me with my, my uh, strength adaptation or muscle growth. Uh, and I can just focus way more on those sets because typically what happens is you get so fatigued from the warmups that you're unable to actually push your working sets. Now this may not be for everybody. And I know some people are at different stages of their journey or doing different blocks, uh, but just something to consider. Okay, so basically the gist of it is don't warm up to the point where it's affecting your actual working sets. All right, tip uh, slash mistake number three is gonna be adding too much volume too quickly. I've been guilty of this, where I start a new block and maybe I took some time off of training and I go right into uh, three to four sets of each exercise uh, on the first week. Now, that sounds good and dandy and you get a great pump, a great workout. The issue is your recovery time. Typically when I do something like that, I find that I'm very fatigued and my recovery isn't fast enough so that I'm able to have an increased frequency. So maybe if you're doing that bro split, right, you slam your chest one time per week, uh, it's gonna take you five or six days to recover. When in actuality, what may be a little bit better is to start off with just two sets, okay? And then progressively overload that week by week. So maybe on the first week I'm doing two sets of bench press and then the next week I do three, then I do four, and then ending that mesocycle, I do five sets. Uh, so just something I've been guilty of, something you wanna be aware of. You think when you're doing it, oh man, I'm not getting this crazy workout, but at the same time, I think you're setting yourself up for success down the road, and, and really it comes down to progressive overload. Uh, so when you end that mesocycle, you're basically going close to failure, uh, and you're really getting a great uh, stimulus to the muscle that you've been targeting. So kind of just a programming concept that we're kind of going over here. Uh, but when you're starting that meso, try to set yourself up for success down the road by doing less volume and then incrementally increasing that volume over time. Okay, that's just progressive overload. Um, but I think it's often overlooked and me being someone who's been training since I was 13, I've made these mistakes and I figured you probably have too. All right, so mistake slash tip number four is going to be uh, putting weight over technique, okay? And typically I see this with younger guys or newer lifters. They just wanna come in, they wanna be cock strong, and they just wanna go as heavy as they can with kind of throwing all technique principles outside uh, of their mind. Uh, so knowing what I know now, and this is something I wish I would've told my younger self, is really focus on the technique of the lift. 
uh, especially when it comes to hypertrophy training, right? We wanna make sure that we're developing a good mind-muscle connection. We wanna make sure that we're controlling the eccentric. Uh, so typically, rule of thumb is that your eccentric should be slower than your concentric. We wanna make sure that we're using a technique to our advantage, okay? And there's a lot of ways we can go with this. Um, I've tried to put out a ton of how-to videos, uh, but really, we wanna make sure that our technique is sound before we increase the weight, okay? Uh, especially when it comes to hypertrophy, if we're you know, getting sloppy, for lack of better words, with our lifts, or we're using too much body English, it becomes really hard to gauge uh, what was our rate of perceived exertion or our reps in reserve, because we're no longer just using the, the muscle group and we're actually using our whole body. So it's kind of like using the example of a lat pull down or a barbell row or any lift really, where yeah, we can throw a ton of weight on, we can get really sloppy and we can technically get those reps, but what was the intent of what we were trying to do there, okay? If we're really trying to stimulate the back or we're really trying to stimulate the chest or whatever muscle you, you want to put in, in place of that is we, we need to have proper technique uh, to get the right stress to that muscle uh, rather than trying to just get you know, almost like fake reps by throwing so much body English in there, it looks like you're having a seizure with a barbell. Right? Just try to tidy up that technique and then over time the weight will come 100%. All right, a mistake slash tip number five, the last one we have, is going to be not using a variation long enough. All right, now, so coming from a, a block periodization background, what I tended to do in the past was I would use, say, a one bench variation, one block, and then switch it the next block and I would keep changing every block. Typically a block for me is gonna be four to five weeks. Now what I've noticed is it usually takes about two blocks of that variation for me, and this isn't the same for everybody, but I do think it's something for you to pay attention to, is if you're getting great adaptation from doing one variation, continue to use it until you no longer do. And you can say the same thing on the other side where some people use the same variation too long and they, they don't switch it up and they should, okay? Um, but you have to kind of know when that point has happened because your body will adapt and get used to something and then it's time to switch. But at the same time, if it's working, right, why change it? So don't just think that if I have five blocks, I need to change my, my one exercise, five different variations. Maybe use that same variation for two uh, to maybe three blocks. Uh, and, and what you find is if it's also a new variation, there's things that you can tidy up with it to, that will further the length of that variation. So maybe when you first start doing an exercise or a variation, your technique isn't that great, okay? It's a novel stimulus, it's new. So maybe it takes you a few weeks to really get the technique down of that movement, and then you can really start to see the benefits of it, and then down the road, once it no longer works, you can change it up. So double-edged sword there, but something for you guys to consider is really uh, utilizing a variation as long as you can before you need to change it up. And like, if it's not broken, right, there's no need to fix it, for lack of better words. Uh, so just something that I was thinking about, and, and as a coach, right, so I also coach high school lacrosse for a couple teams as a strength and conditioning coach, uh, and then I actually do coach the sport for one of the teams, is working with these, these younger kids, uh, especially people who are new in their journey, it may take them you know, a couple months to really get a, a variation down. Uh, so it's kind of not in their best interest to continually switch it up all the time. Now I know there's gonna be rebuttals and arguments to this point and I'm fine with that. Feel free to comment down below. I'm always looking to learn. I have a very open mind when it comes to this stuff. But just from my experience and the, the background of, of training and programming I have, these are just some considerations uh, and some things that I've tweaked or made mistakes in the past that I'm trying to learn from. You know, so take whatever's applicable to you. Not all five of these will be super applicable, uh, but maybe there's one that stands out that you can throw into your training and change it up. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, I really do appreciate your support, especially during these times. Like I said, kind of a recap, I'm going to be trying to put out more consistent content. Maybe it's one video a week to start, and then we can build off of that. Uh, trying to just, you know, get, get stuff out. Um, the other thing is I'm going to try to be more of an advocate for, for mental health and using fitness as a tool and modality to help people who struggle with mental health uh, along with other resources. Okay, So I'm looking to start a support group here actually at the gym uh, which will really help with people who are in need when it comes to mental health. Uh, so just really appreciate you guys uh, so much. Uh, lastly, if you guys are looking for programming, okay, we have the Zastrank programming app. We have about 350 people on it right now and they're having great results. I try to take the thinking out of everything by providing you guys structured and sound program uh, that, that hits on all the points we just talked about. 
And if you guys are watching these videos, all it's gonna do is enhance the program, okay? Uh, so please check out the link, okay? There's 21 plus programs on there right now. I'm gonna start putting more programs on the app for you to try. I have a, a new bodybuilding program that I'm currently doing. It is a variation of a push-pull leg, uh, but I'm gonna put that on the app so you guys can follow along. It's gonna be different than some of the other bodybuilding or hypertrophy or even push-pull leg splits that I put out there. So that's what we got. Uh, there's a ton of new seminars and clinics that are on the zatstrength.net website. So if you're interested in meeting me, uh, doing any of these courses, we have programming courses, we have specific lift courses, uh, there's all sorts of goodies on there. So I highly recommend if you're trying to increase your training knowledge or just better yourself as a lifter, you come to those seminars. I love meeting new people. I love hanging out and I get to answer a ton of your questions in person, which is just an added benefit because it's very specific to you if you have those questions. So uh, thanks guys. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And uh, until then, stay a lean, mean, strength machine. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.